once again for your daily crypto update with Framework Fortune Crypto, Mondays through Saturdays, 4 p.m. Central, sometimes 4.30ish, depending on how crazy the day is. But, welcome back Framework Fortune community and welcome any new uh, people to the live streams here. We're going to be taking a look at some technical analysis for some coins on our watch list and checking out Project Quantum or Quantum Works. Very interesting NFT project brought up to me yesterday. So we're going to dive into it after we go through these charts. Right now, AAVE Avi is up 10%. You know, it's been down, so we get a little bounce. Nothing really there. Sushi's up about 10%, bouncing off of 550. Pretty low price for sushi at 550. Does look like it's starting to maybe go bullish back on the day, but or on the year, but it needs to break over 12. Looks like there. Nothing really else moving too crazy today. Just kind of in some consolidation. You can see Bitcoin still on its path. We can take this triangle out now because it broke out of it, but still trying to hold that little area of support at 47,000. Trend line is right below us at 46,000. So I think more than likely we're going to hold and continue up that path like I originally predicted. It looks like I'm going to be wrong. I predicted at the beginning of the year that Bitcoin's all-time highs this year would be 75,000. They got up to 70, almost 70. So I was close. But now I think we'll see 75K here in the next few months of this new year with the way this wedge pattern looks. I think we're going to take this path and hit 75K before we have a pullback in March. Ether, on the other hand, might have a pullback sooner. I was looking at it this morning in the stock trading live stream. Yeah, I got. I will talk about gods here in just a second. Gods is my next one on my list. I always got to start with Bitcoin and Ethereum because they kind of anchor the overall markets. But Ethereum not able to hold as well as it has been dipped down into this path that could lead to a sell-off. Now, it has bounced back up since this morning, and it looks like it could get back into this path. So we'll see. Still a little indecision which way that's going to go, but overall, Ethereum still on that trend line looking bullish. This could be a possible head and shoulders pattern. So here would be the head, here would be the other shoulder, and if we come up and get stopped at this line again at 4,000, then we might see a dump off. So a little bit of concerns there. Not nothing to worry about right this second, but over through January, this next week or two, we're going to need to keep a close eye on Ethereum. Because Ethereum was looking more bullish than Bitcoin, but now it's kind of switching back. So that could affect the markets, you know, it could affect even gods itself. We just saw that pullback in Ethereum and of course gods showing the same pullback even more so cuz gods had ran up, you know, double the price in a 4-day span. But still holding this strong bottom support in that 4 area and I picked some more up yesterday at like 426 I think. And it just needs to break this triangle that's been in. You see a lot of selling pressure, but we're coming in this new year, a lot of hype building on gods. I think we're going to see a breakout um, probably second week of January. It may be quicker. A lot of these breakouts I've been predicting have been breaking out quicker than I expect. So we'll see. I, I don't think we're going to see it down any lower maybe at maybe three if there's if for some reason it cracks here maybe it could drop down to that three where it's dropped a couple of times so far but it's not showing that it's it's going to crack this support at the moment so no need to be concerned about that 
God's just consolidating. So with God's though, IMX, and look at this, look at this, perfect, beautiful following this pattern, going breaking out of this triangle wedge, pushing all the way up earlier to 535, and I am swinging IMX as well. This is a mutable X, the platform that God's Unchained is built on, the layer two on Ethereum. So I've got 150 IMX right now. Yeah, you guys can see it. And I got them at 492. And then I did buy a little bit at, let's see, I bought 60 at 483 and 90 at 492. Looking at for that $5 breakout last night, which I alerted on the frameworkfortune.com in the crypto hub. So with IMX looking like it's going to continue up this trend line that it started. If it starts really breaking out, gods can see sympathy just off of that because gods is built on um, IMX. So I'm a little bit more bullish on IMX at the moment because it's showing more bullish movement. And I think gods will end up following it. And I think we'll see a lot of the NFT projects that are on IMX follow what IMX does, kind of like Cosmos, uh, the Atom Token within the cosmos ecosystem cosmos back up to 30 dollars and you see akt xprt iris all these guys starting to come back up so that's what i'm thinking let me go ahead and remove that downtrend that broke it's very very beautiful and then the all-time highs on imx at least on this coinbase chart is 578 so I think we could at least push back up to 575 this weekend. And then if IMX breaks over 6, that would that would be where it could really start going. So IMX and God's real close to this same breakout. I think IMX is closer to the breakout. And then God's may follow like a four or five days behind or something. We'll see. Hard to say, but yeah, I'm bullish on both Gods and IMX. And, of course, bullish on Adam. If you guys have been following me, you know I'm a, 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 what is it called, a cosmonaut, I guess. I guess I'm a cosmonaut. I invest in the ecosystem, keep a close eye on all these coins. Persistence looks like it's about ready for a bounce off of that bottom area. I may have to pick up some more. Add to my staking wallet. Hey, ho, uh, hoi hunch, how is it? How you going? Boy, that didn't come out. I don't know what that was. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad to see you back. What's up, Ruben? Yep, Cosmos. I was just talking about it, man. Just talking about it. Uh, but Cosmos looks fine. You know, had that bounce off the 20 area, now just kind of going sideways right through here. Getting held up at $30, but if it holds 30 as support, we are getting close to the tip of this wedge. But I think Cosmos will really see a bigger move towards February as they start making those bridges actually active. If they do it by that time. I, I would imagine, because Cosmos is pretty fast, that development team is that they will have those bridges to Bitcoin and Ethereum first quarter. I could be wrong though, I'm just speculating, so don't hold me to that. But I'm yeah, I mean Cosmos ecosystem it just just craziness there. It's just gonna keep exploding more than likely. Unless something dramatic happens. I have heard that there are some cosmonauts who are not happy with some of the proposals that have been voted on, some of the governance, uh, is some validators have a pretty heavy voting power. But overall, I don't think that's going to matter. I think the validators are going to know the right things to do. At least you would think. You don't want the... If you got validators that are voting for proposals that are doing crazy stuff, that could be a problem. I don't see it happening, though. Cosmos is going to be too important. 
So spell another one of these uh, one of these cheat coins here. We took a look at when it first broke out. It had some pops up there a couple of days, but drops just as fast as it pops. Looks like it's trying to hold uh, two cents as support. If it can hold there, it could come back up, but I don't know. There's a lot of trying to push, a lot of buying volume trying to come in, but some heavy selling pressure. So it could be that maybe initial coin offering holders don't want to hold this coin. They want to dump it. Not really any way to tell. Uh, Axie Infinity. Axie Infinity possibly cracking this trend line. It is going down that path. At the moment, though, it is trying to hold right across there above $90. So as long as it can hold and get back up in the green path, Axie should be fine and continue on up its trend line at the moment. Just a little sketchy. And Shiba, Shiba trying, but still not quite there yet. It did get up to the quad zero four area, but was rejected. So it's got to break back through there. It is holding up in the support area, the support zone that it's been holding up. So that's still a decent sign. If it builds a higher low here than that previous low, then Shiba could continue to run up. Uh, Polygon Matic, we'll take a look at that one, Ruben. Matic, uh, what's it doing today? Has it exploded over three yet? Because that's what I'm looking for on it. No, nope, not quite. So it's just holding the 250 area support right now. Actually, let's look at this a little closer time frame. It's going to one hour. So short term on this one hour, there's this little uptrend that you could follow on Matic. If it continues to follow this uptrend, we could see that push to three. The only thing is when it gets to 275 right across here, that's going to be a shoulder. So if it doesn't break over, right there at 275 then this would be a head and shoulders pattern so we don't want a head and shoulders pattern that always leads to the sell-off well not always but most of the time and I'm not saying that could I'm not saying that is going to happen I'm just saying that is a possibility Maddox been pretty bullish so kind of be surprising to see it drop real hard out of a head and shoulders on the one hour because that head and shoulders is not going to exist on the daily chart if we go back and look at it so we'll see but it to me it looks pretty decent right here just needs to hold up a little bit longer over 250 and start pushing up Okay, let's see. What else do we got? How's Solana doing? Solana. Solana seems to be trying to follow this path. It's a little below it at the moment, but if it can pop back up in there, which it could at any time, eight, nine dollar move is not much for Solana. Solana can rip eight, nine dollars pretty quickly. Still waiting on that for that bounce. Had a little bounce, but needing to bounce again. Mana still climbing up. It's uptrend, testing it at the moment. So if we see another few days that start to hold up and continue to climb up, we can see mana start to climb again. That is almost a head and shoulders pattern as well, though. That same thing. That'd be your head, shoulder shoulder so uh, it all eh, if it doesn't hold this trend line it could crack very hard 
drop all the way back down to a dollar to the original trend line. That probably wouldn't happen. There's some resistance at like 270. Let me see, actually 250, two dollars a course hold up or something, and then 150. But if that trend line cracks, it's still quite a ways to fall down. So I don't, I don't know. The central and Axie both looking. They were looking really good, and after these last pullbacks, they're giving me a little concern. Um, Avalanche. Avalanche, you can see, is coming down in that red path. So it's trying to hold a 50-day moving average on the daily chart. It could bounce from there. Since it didn't bounce on this one, we'll delete that one. Whoops, that was not what I wanted to delete. There we go. We could see it. We could see it come all the way down and bounce. Or it could possibly bounce from here. Get my highlighter. Something like that. That was, we put it, yeah, right, like that. That would be more like it. Now, if it comes down to the trend line, it doesn't hold the trend line here, then it would definitely crack. So, uh, looks like it's just trying to test 100 support. That probably will hold up. It's held up before, but it might not. If it comes back down to 85, though, it's not a bad area to look at it at it, it just this would just be an early breakout though because the tip is still right over here so i'm leaning more towards it coming down some more and then having that breakout now if there's any coins you guys want me to check out you just let me know throw them in the chat there with the ticker symbol Suku, I was watching, but you can see Suku, uh, and I was trying to get a nice little trade on this, but it couldn't hold that trend line, so I had to get out, taking a little loss on it. But you got to cut them losses when they start to break down. It, it could try to hold 45 cents, where a lot of these wicks are shot down to, but it's looking pretty bearish. It may have to come back down quite a bit. Where's that line at? It's like 40, let's just say 48. So I'm actually going to take that off of the green watch list. I'm going to take it off of the watch list altogether because it's not doing anything really. CGLD bouncing off of 450. Still holding that as a swing. Looking forward to try to get up to the top of this trend line. Haven't quite got there yet. But I think there's enough room for it to try to get close to that 550 area. It may not because it's in a wedge just like everything else. So could be too early for this to break out. XYO. Okay. Yeah, XYO having a little sell off. But so far today, it looks like it's going to try to hold this trend line. If it can hold the trend line and start going green tomorrow, that is one that could possibly start moving again. And that had a pretty big rip last time it ripped. From three all the way up to eight cents, five cent rip on this cheap of a coin. That's a big move. And it likes to pop. It's shown plenty of times before where it can pop. Including recently where it sold off everything that it did pop. But yeah, it's worth keeping an eye on right now. It's on my blue watch, but I'm actually going to put it on the green watch. We'll put it on high, high alert. For this next couple of days because that could be an interesting play all right so why didn't you let's see something else pop up no that else has popped up but 
IMX on that 520 area. So let's jump into Quantum Works. If there's any other coins, like I said, if you guys are just joining or anything, I will check out projects. But let's take a look at this, find out what this is about. So it's powered by Crypto, built in Unreal Engine 5. Unreal Engine, if you're not familiar with the gaming industry, has put out some very unique stuff. They do have a teaser trailer, it looks like, on YouTube. And I will share this, guys, to you right here in the live stream. So if you want that link, you can check it out. See, our, our model allows gamers to enjoy the high-stakes competitive action of AAA first-person shooter while simultaneously earning real-world currency. So they're going to have some type of currency. Here we go. Let's find out about this token. The website's really nice. They put some time into these graphics and artwork. So this definitely looks like a probably a pretty thought out project probably backed and stuff it may even not it may not be decentralized but the qbi token is the in-game token currency which powers the economy and project quantum it's a bep20 token so it's on this binance smart chain simple but elegant smart contract design generates revenue for quantum works with a 10 percent tax on all buy sell and move transactions whoo Boy, 10% tax, that's a little high. 3.5% is swapped and liquidated to BNB. 3.5% is injected back into the game economy in the form of in-game rewards, items value, competition prizes, and 3% is given back to all the players and holders of Qubit. So... You know, if you're holding Qubit, you are going to get 3% back of your... Well, you won't get 3... See, this is a weird model that we're starting to run into. I mean, I guess if you're only holding the coin and not worried about the NFT side or any of that, then you won't really care about this 10% tax on all buys. But if you're playing the game... And you're paying playing paying ten percent on all these things, on all these transactions, and you're only getting three percent back uh, of the total pool in the form of this auto staking, it looks like this is gonna be then that really I mean it'll save you a little bit of money, but you're still I mean you're basically paying yourself part of the tax, which eh. Oh, yeah, right there it says auto-staking. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, let's get into this a little bit more. The amount min minted was $1 trillion. What's that 20 mean? Is that, uh, I guess that's just saying it's the same thing as the BEP 20. Okay, so... 100 billion, 10%, six wallets totaling 100... Okay, I just don't know why they put 100 billion twice. Liquidity is locked for two years, totaling 10%, held by the six core members of the development team and the contract creator. These will be locked in Unicrypt, which is an external provider. 12% of the wallet, which is 120 billion, will be used to do deflationary burns of the coin when we hit milestones or to reward early adopters of the token with airdrops boosting their holdings. So they are planning on doing token burns and airdrops. 200 billion in the investment wallet allows for external investment to buy into the project at any time. This wallet is reserved for investment by fintech companies or companies in the game development space. Hmm. Mm, I don't know about that. That sounds a little sketchy. 
because why are they getting a special investment wallet? If they wanted to invest, why? I mean, maybe, maybe they're saying, because it does say, hmm, it's not very specific on the wording there. I'd like to find out more about that. See, reflections, we reward each and every one of you for believing our project. To anyone who's thinking that sounds great. So here's some calculations this fellow made. If you got the original airdrop in May when we launched uh, 2 B and B for 2 million, 200 million tokens, you've made over 71 million in reflections. That 71 million in reflection is currently worth over $14,000. You would have more than 20X your original investment in reflections alone. But that's his calculations. I don't like looking at that. So here's the tax. So they use the QBIT to keep our game free to play by allowing us both to develop the game and when the game launches to continue to support and update like everything else. Looks like uh, that's really a lot. Purchasing our token is pretty straightforward following these easy steps. Look at this. Jesus. I mean, this is basically telling you to download um, Trust Wallet, create a new wallet in there, all of that stuff, and then you pretty much go to Binance and swap for it. Okay, we got an interesting team there. They're also hiring. If anybody's looking for a job, you might be able to get a job, work from home for them. But here is the white papers. I don't need to read that. We pretty much know what their mission is. They're saying all their games will be free to play. That jumped out at me. So here's the game overview. Let's see what this game is about. Charnel has fallen, or Charnel, whatever. An SOS is sent out from humanity's distant colony world. A sort of cry for help, warning of an invasion by a never encountered foe, the Scythe. So it's basically uh, like an outer space shooter. It's a looter shooter, okay. And everything you acquire can be traded for the QBIT. So, high stake shooter, if you slay a seeker, you can earn your pick of their loot. If you are killed, your prize possessions are up for grabs. So you have some high risk, high rewards in the high stake shooters. <laughs> PVE meets PVP. Not exactly sure how you can do that. Oh, they're just joining it together. So the indigenous creatures of Cernos just might these deadly monsters are attracted by secret activity and only become more aggressive the longer the game lasts okay treasure hunt to the death the ultimate prize in each game is a single hidden cache of legendary equipment technology and resources collect artifacts and clues around the map to help you find it but be careful you won't be the only one after the prize Deep customizations, but you can see how crazy these graphics are on this. They put high stake shooter on there twice, just I guess so you know. Yeah, look at that weapon. 
This is a project quantum here. So all major in-game items such as weapons, armor, and cosmetics will be generated as NFTs. So you'll be able to, it looks like too, there's probably going to be a randomized, kind of like Borderlands, where there can be a lot of different NFTs created. So far... Okay, here's what they've got done since the launch on May 21st of this year. They launched their token, they listed on CoinGeckos within 48 hours, and then listed on CoinMarketCap. They have an excess of 6,000 holders. They've been featured in various news outlets. They've grown their community on Discord, other social media chan uh, channels. They've hired a consulting mm -hmm. Art director uh, formed a working partnership with Rumen Group Dragons Lake Entertainment to prototyping and development. Hired our lead world builder, Jamie Magnus Stone. That's an interesting name. So as of now, we've moved from pre-production and concepting to production by utilizing a working partnership. And that's all the white papers are for now. But this is a, I mean, these aren't even white papers, man. These are full graphicked out papers. So very impressive presentation here from Quantum. Let's pull up uh, Live Coin Watch. Take a look at some of these stats on this thing. QBIT. There's two QBIT, so be aware of that. Right now, it's less than a penny. It's not showing any of their numbers though. Let's pull up a chart for QBIT. I'm going to put this on watch. After looking at all of that, crypto, wrong thing. Um, yeah, we don't have any way to look at it. It's not on any obvious charts, probably on Binance, but. Hmm. Well, no, why don't they have a Binance chart? That'd be the question. One trillion supply, but they said they were going to burn. It's so, it's really cheap right now. Under a penny for this is looking kind of tasty. Let's see if I can find the actual game. Looks like I gotta sign up for it. Oh, here's the NFTs. We didn't look at that. Let's look at the, okay, so here's the marketplace. And you're gonna have to uh, connect through BNB. Okay, so we can see the locked addresses. They've actually already burned 30 trillion, it looks like, in QBIT. Um, that's not showing, this is just showing me like my wallet though. It's not really showing me. Here we go, Quantum App. Let's open that. That is the app. So that's all the app is so far. So they don't quite have the marketplace up, it looks like. So they're going to have to build out a whole marketplace. There's This is still so young, but this is a very interesting project. I'm going to add a bookmark to it in case I didn't already. Let's see what their blog looks like. Is it different? Yeah, so their blog is a little bit different. Oops. But this is definitely one to look more into.
There, there's some things that are a little concerning. I'm going to go ahead and join their Discord so I can keep an eye on it close. They have 7,100 members with a, about 1,500 online. So there's not a ton of people in this yet. And so you do got to get verified. my direct message is off oh wait a minute it may be because I'm in streamer mode <laughs> let's see I think my direct messaging was off. People direct message me all the time. Here, get out of the streamer mode. Let's see if, if that helps. Let me try to re go into it again. Oh, there we go. This little capture bot. I see. I didn't see that on um, Discord. They put a little capture that popped up in a different message. Project Quantum. So let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, they built this Discord out. They are having, it looks like they just had a AMA on Telegram. Got the updates, Twitter, rules, FAQ, everything pretty much set out here. Huh. All right. Well, we'll be covering Project Quantum from now on. I would wager as I am interested in this project. I don't think I, I'm definitely probably not going to play it because I don't have time to. I barely have time for Gods Unchained as it is. But I I might pick up a few of this token. IMX with a little pullback there. Matic has some big bullish news. Oh, yeah, you want the link to that white paper? Let me grab that white paper for Re Ruben real quick. Uh, yeah, Ruben, if you go check it out and do some research on it, let me know what you think, too, because it is definitely an interesting project. Popping in Discord to you real quick. What's going on here? There you go. There's that. So, Ruben, maybe you can find out some more information on it too. So maybe something I missed, but I like what I'm seeing. I uh, said, let's go. Let's go see if there's any news on Matic on CoinDesk. I may start using CoinDesk. I don't like some of the opinion pieces. They put a lot of opinion pieces out. I don't want opinion pieces when I'm looking at news. I want the real deal. I want the. I want the statistics. I want the facts. I don't need your opinion. Make my own opinion. Sushi tries to pick up the pieces. After identity theft, Salvadorians now report funds disappearing from Chivo wallets. Oh, God. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler hires Senate banking aid. Why? 
Oh, God. I don't even want to get into that. Binance still not authorized to operate it, it, it operate in Ontario. So, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, exactly. This guy knows what's up. SEC commissioner says Washington doesn't need a new crypto regulator. Yeah, stay the stay the hell out of it, Washington. Go go sit down somewhere. Central Swiss Central Bank ready to run with WCBDC. Just takes a policy decision. Huh. But not seeing anything on Matic. Let's go into CoinGecko and pull up Matic. Kevin O'Leary saying his crypto holdings could reach 20% of portfolio. Polygon quietly patched vulnerability that put $24 billion in Matic at risk. Hey, they patched it. If they fixed it, they fixed it. You can't be mad at them if they did it quietly or not. What are you mad at? Shut up. <laughs> Crypto market, Omnicron dip. This person doesn't even know what they're talking about. The, the yield farming party is just getting started. That was back in May. Let's look at their Twitter, see if they had anything on there. No, they don't have their little Twitter on here like all the other ones do. Hmm. There we go. We'll just go to their actual Twitter. So they're going back through what they did through last year. Yeah, there's the recap. They had some DeFi contest. Polyscore. Do you have uh, do you have any of that news, Fat Boy Drew? Do you have a link to any of that directly, so I, I don't have to dig for it? Because if they're gonna start burning tokens, I mean they don't have that big of a supply in the first place. It's only ten billion. That could be something interesting to see, though. Could be uh, definitely some price movements out of that type of move. Yeah, no problem, man. If, if you got it real quick, just pop it on here. We'll take a look at it. While you're doing that, I'm going to take a quick little break because on Tuesdays and Thursdays when I do the live Gods Unchained uh, gameplay, this is three streams a day. So um, this is the crypto update on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the third stream. I'm starting to wear down. So I'm going to take a quick little break while Fatboy gets us that information, and I'll be right back.
Alrighty, Fat Boy Drizzy, what'd you send that to me on Instagram? Let's see, I might have to pull it off Instagram and send it to myself here. Nope, he still hasn't sent it yet, so he must be looking for it. That's okay. No worries, Mike. If you can't find it right now, just send it to me later. We'll we'll cover it tomorrow on tomorrow's crypto update because we're we'll going to let the stream go about nine more minutes before I call it a day because I am wearing down. I am mix. Having a little pullback there, but still looking good on the daily. We have any more movers? Avi still pushing up a little bit, but nothing else really going on. It was a quiet day in the market. Voyager token did have a spike back up to 380, but pulling down again. And this is what I was concerned about earlier in the year with Voyager was with the token swap that Voyager did. They have a new minting function where they can mint more Voyager coins, which... We'll see how that affects the affects the price. They said it was going to be only a year end thing, so that could be why we are seeing a continued sell off. People are not sure how to feel about that, but I mean, the cheaper Voyager token gets, the better. I'd love to get it back down on a dollar or something, because soon that Voyager desktop will be out, and that's going to be that's going to be interesting. I'm looking. I'm. Uh, I'm really hoping I'm not disappointed by Voyager's desktop platform. If they if they disappoint me on that, then I may leave Voyager. Voyager's been good so far, but so far I'm actually at a big nasty pullback, getting rejected off 200. But on the daily chart, that 10 day did cross the 50, starting to act a little bullish. It's probably gonna need to come back down some more to like 120. But if it has another dip. And it can hold up that new trend line. I think we could we could possibly you know this is always one to keep an eye on for quick day trades and stuff. It's not one I would hold. That's for sure because this thing is volatile. Is I mean, shoo. Luna's still pulling back. New. NMR, this one is not but done too much since this initial rip and make. Got all the way up to 96. Uh, this is a basically a decentralized hedge fund project for the stock market. So they're using AI technology and anybody can come into the new Myra script or new Myra, however you say it, and create your own trading bot. Uh, that will trade for you and basically if that trading bot does well the rest of the crypto hedge fund will adopt it and add it to the fund and the bots just keep trading and paying people out who are numera holders numera whatever nmr holders so it's an interesting play down a, quite a bit though from them previous highs if you know that tr that trend line uh, may not be too bad of a play. My only concern is if the stock market crashes, then what was what will that do to this? Because if all the bots are set up for long trading and they don't have any bots for shorting or you know anything like that, they're gonna get destroyed. So that's my that's like my biggest concern with NMR. I think this is project has a lot of potential being in the stock market myself, but I, like I said, the stock market is not in a good spot. V-Chain looking like, hmm, so started to get back up in that path, but now in the middle of both of these paths, just trying to build a little higher low there, 80 cents, if you can hold that, it could get back on the path. Yeah, just a slow day. We'll see how the 
Stock market acts tomorrow with it being Friday and the last day of the year and see if we start to heat up this weekend. I don't think we'll heat up too much in the crypto market this weekend. I think it's going to be about mid-January, but we'll see. We don't know for sure. But that's it for today's live crypto update. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, for should be 4 p.m. Central tomorrow. And we'll be back Saturday for some live Gods Unchained weekend ranked event matches. See how much loot I can run up. Uh, Saturdays at 11. So, yeah, if you haven't yet, check out FrameworkFortune.com. It's free. Sign up with email. No paywalls. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time. No, I don't. Ha, ha, ha.